If you are in the market currently for a six core processor, then these two CPUs right here are representing some of the best value in town or actually in the world right now because the Ryzen 5 2600, you can get this for about $103 shipped at current market prices on AliExpress. And then right beside it is a very interesting CPU. This is the Ryzen 5 3500X. Now you can get this currently for $118 shipped worldwide. However, this was never intended to be sold at retail outlets. It was actually a CPU that was designed for system integrators and also businesses. That is whole systems that are being sold with a CPU. So the difference is we're looking at six cores, six threads on the Ryzen 5 3500X and then on the Ryzen 5 2600, we've got six cores, 12 threads, though the difference is here is that this is 12 nanometer plus and it's Zen plus architecture on the Ryzen 5 2600, but then the 3500X carries all those benefits of Zen 2, including seven nanometer, it's more power efficient. And of course, the biggest one for me is that it has precision boost overdrive too. We're in the test today, this CPU was clocking anywhere from four to 4.1 gigahertz in the gaming benchmarks, as opposed to the Ryzen 5 2600, which comes out of the box with the clock speed up to 3.7 gigahertz all core. But then with the 2600, you can overclock this to around about 4.1 to 4.2 gigahertz with a decent motherboard and also cooler. Though with that important information out of the way, let's put these CPUs on the test bench where today I'm gonna to be using the 5700 XT. Now besides the Ryzen 5 2600, and the 3500X, I'm also going to include the Ryzen 5 3600 and also the i5-9400F, where after we run these numbers, we're finally going to see how this six core, six threaded Zen 2 CPU holds up. Let's get into it with some quick B-roll, but it's going to take a lot longer than the quick B-roll. That's the lucky part of being a viewer. Now with all that benchmarking out of the way, we've got five different titles here and we'll start with the best news first. And that is Strange Brigade, where this is the game that is just a poster child for how well a game can be optimized. And not only that, how well the Vulkan API can be utilized. And so what we saw here was numbers that were pretty much identical across the field, even with the 2600 not being overclocked on the core clock. And another thing I will state about the 2600 is that we got it to 3200 megahertz CL14. But when we tried to use some 3600 megahertz memory, that didn't work on this particular CPU. The other three CPUs in the stack though, they would take 3600 megahertz memory. So that's a difference we'll talk about a little bit later, but for what it's worth, I did decide to equalize all these uh, CPUs on the same memory overclocks just to keep things apples to apples. And then we move over next though. We've got uh, GTA 5 where the 3500X scored the victory here. And basically having SMT switched off in this title is giving us more FPS, as we can see with the Ryzen 5 3600 versus the 3500X. They pretty much boosted to similar speeds, though I did think the Ryzen 5 3600 boosted maybe about 25 to 50 megahertz higher on average. So the 3500X may be indeed one of the worst bins of the whole Ryzen product stack in Zen 2. Obviously, I'd have to test more CPUs to validate this assumption, but both these samples, actually all four of these samples in today's test are retail samples too, by the way. Though back to GTA 5, we can see here that the 3500X is getting roughly a 13% increase over the 2600 overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz, where we're just using PBO2 on that 3500X and now not overclocked on the 2600, then it's getting a lot more performance, which is going to be a trend that we will see through some of these other titles. Take for example, F1 2019. We saw here again, the Ryzen 5 3500X coming in with some chart topping numbers. 
And the i5-9400F is doing well too, but we'll talk about the price differential after we finish up the gaming benchmarks, where I feel like the 3500X has pretty much made the 9400F irrelevant after looking at these numbers. Though again, against the 2600 even overclocked, we're looking at a 10% increase in FPS figures. And then against the non-overclocked numbers, we're looking at even more of a boost. Though of course, looking at the FPS numbers in their raw state, it is easy to see that all four of these CPUs are easily capable of driving over 144 hertz, which is gonna give you a great smooth experience at 1080p. On to the next title here, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. We've got here 1080p high settings, and we've got here the 3500X kind of showing off, and it's beating the 2600 by about 14% against those overclocked figures, and then not overclocked, it's scoring yet again a big victory. The one you can see with these gaming figures is that the 3600 and 3500X are essentially the same thing, but having that SMT switched off for the 3500X, making it six cores, six threads, is also giving us better numbers in itself. And now we will pull up the last benchmark here, and that is Red Dead Redemption 2. And what we can see with RDR2 is that the 3500X, again, scoring that victory on the FPS figures, but it's also scoring a much higher minimum and same with the i5-9400F. So basically having uh, multi-threading on the single cores disabled or SMT is essentially giving us more cash per thread and that can be helping with the minimum numbers and of course in turn helping slightly with the averages. So it was interesting to see that in 2019 and especially coupled with a 5700 XT that the Ryzen 5 3500X and also the i5-9400F are both pretty solid uh, considerations, but here's where ultimately the crunch comes in for the 9400F. And that is, it costs more than the 3500X, and it's really got absolutely no upgrade path, as opposed to the 3500X, which actually does have an upgrade path. And so this is where the new king is in town for budget gaming, and you want the best performance with really good 1% lows and even 0.1% lows and also really good minimums. It was a really smooth experience. And the best thing is you don't really have to do anything with the 3500X. It's such an easy CPU to put in, put a budget cooler on, and then also let PBO2 do its work for you. And all you have to do is really just lock in XMP profiles, which you can do that on an A320 motherboard. Though, speaking of motherboards, the 2600, that can still go pretty hard. And of course, if you're going to get into productivity numbers, you've got six more threads available and you're coming in at a cheaper price point, roughly 15 US dollars cheaper on AliExpress. So the appeal of the 2600 is of course there if you wanna do more than just gaming and extract a bit more out of those 12 threads. But keep in mind, you will still have to get a decent cooler if you wanna overclock. Something like the Snowman, which comes in at 15 bucks and I've actually taken a look at this cooler, I'll put the link for that video up here, we will do this uh, six core 12 threaded Ryzen 5 2600 absolutely fine. Though one thing is the Ryzen 5 2600, if you put that on an A320, overclocking will be pretty limited. I have uh, come into one motherboard in the past where I did get some overclocking unlocked, but then the BIOS update essentially locked out any overclocking and then I also flip that motherboard. I've got a A320 ASRock motherboard back in, but that's got the new Ryzen 3000 desktop ready BIOS, and I can't backdate that, so I can't unfortunately overclock with that motherboard for you guys. Though, if you want to overclock with the Ryzen 5 2600, you'll most likely want to get a B450 motherboard, which will set you back around an extra 30, 40, or even $50 over the A320, Whereas the A320 will work really well with the 3500X with PBO Boost 2 enabled out of the box. And you'll still be able to get higher memory speeds on the A320 motherboards. That is, you can lock in your XMP profiles. So summing up everything in today's video, in a nutshell, the Ryzen 5 3500X is a phenomenal CPU for the money, and it's also a phenomenal CPU for the numbers too. Really smooth experience, but you've also got some of those augmented benefits that we just spoke about as well. Though do keep in mind, one more thing I will mention with the A320 motherboards is there is one out there at the moment, the Max Sun. I've tested this, it's a $48 board, and I really would step it up to something else 
For instance, if you get a 3500X and this motherboard, they just won't work. The BIOS on this board hasn't been updated for literally over a year. So it looks like Maxon have dropped support for it. And with that, you won't get a 3500X working on this motherboard, unless of course, you know some Russians who can mod a hacked BIOS for you. And even then your mileage may vary because I wouldn't do it. So as it stands, you can get that Maxon motherboard and a 2600 and not overclock it and have a decent value gaming proposition for 150 bucks. Or of course, you can get a more expensive A320 like the ASRock, which I think is going for around $70 and also a Ryzen 5 3500X. This is if we're just looking at AliExpress prices too. And you can get that for around about $185. So the premium there is about $35, but you will have a better experience and you'll also be using less power in the process from the wall. Though if you wanna get an A320 motherboard that supports the 3500X, then I'm actually not too sure on what is out there on the market on AliExpress at the moment, because you want to look for a board that says Ryzen 3000 ready, because if it doesn't say that, then you're going to have to update the BIOS. And with that, you're gonna need an older CPU, possibly even a Ryzen 3 1200, or of course, Ryzen 5 1400 to update that BIOS. And if you're building a whole system for yourself and you don't have any of that other gear on hand, then you're gonna be really out of luck. As it stands, the only motherboard that I can see on AliExpress that comes in at a decent price and is Ryzen 3000 ready is a B450 from MSI. So basically with all those gaming numbers out of the way and all those benchmarks finished, I'll put some links in the description below for you guys. Though one thing I will talk about before I get on out of here is I'm actually kind of surprised AMD's not offering this to the mainstream retail market. The 3500X is just such a good value for money CPU and not only that, having SMT off can actually give you more performance than the 3600. And especially if you're gonna be going with some of those even cheaper graphics cards like the 1660 Super, which are really good value in their own right, as opposed to the 5700 XT, which will set you back about 400 US dollars. You can see the 3500X, I'd love to see this uh, be released mainstream. I'm not sure why AMD's chose to do this, but apparently that is not a problem for our friends over at AliExpress that are just selling these things to anyone in the world. And with that aside, we've got the question of the day from Kiki Rizki, and they ask, I have an Athlon X4 860K, eight gigabytes, and an RX 570 eight gigabytes. Is this worth or will it bottleneck? What do you think, mate? Love the mate on the end. And basically the 860K is a CPU I don't have a whole lot of experience with. Though I have had one come through the studio here and I tested it out with some games and I'm going to say that it's really not a CPU I'd be going with personally. I feel like the stuttering on it was actually quite bad. Uh, if anything, I'd definitely at least try to get like an FX8350 or even the older Phenom 6 cores, uh, the 1055 I think they're called. Uh, they'll give you a much better gaming experience though. One thing I would suggest as well is also first gen uh, Xeons like X3440 if you're on an extreme budget with an H55 motherboard, they'll be able to give you a really good experience with the RX 570. Me personally, I've tried the 860K and it just felt like a CPU that was lackluster. That's just my opinion on it. Of course, it will do some basic uh, entry level gaming, but it will give you even then some stuttering from time to time. That was just my experience with it. Would love to read you guys and your thoughts and opinions on the 860K. But of course, even more importantly, I'd love to read your thoughts on the 3500X and also the 2600. And the reason why I picked both these CPUs for today's comparison is because I feel that they're both coming in at a really good price point. And now the 3500X, at least on the AliExpress price point, has made the i5-9400F irrelevant, which is pretty surprising because that was one of their last CPUs that they had that was really relevant for the average gamer. Though, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also, if you've made it this far into today's video and you're not subbed already, may wish to consider hitting that sub button, ringing that bell, and I'll see you in another tech video very soon. Next one's actually gonna be really juicy, just like the last time I promised the next one was gonna be juicy. It's always juicy content around here. I'll catch you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.